Hello everyone, welcome you all. In the today's video, I'm going to show you how we can work with the parallel streams. So normally when I create a stream which contains a multiple objects, right? So we have some collection and we will add all the collection objects to the stream and then they are ready for processing. Now, by default, all streams will process the data sequentially. So for example, let us say I have one collection, so which contains a multiple object like this. This is my collection. Now add this collection into the stream. So let us say this is my stream and all objects are present in the stream. So once objects are added to the stream, then I can process the stream directly by adding certain number of terminal or non-terminal methods. And once you process this uh, data on the stream, then we can collect the data in some other collection or we can directly print the data. So here this stream is by default process the objects sequentially. Okay, by default the stream is process the data sequentially. Now I want to process the data parallelly. So what is an advantage of it? We can improve the performance of the execution. So the process will be improved. The performance will be improved. So if I process these objects parallelly, suppose I have a four different objects and I can make two objects as a one stream, another two objects as a one stream. If I, if I process them parallelly, the execution becomes very faster. Okay, so this is a concept which is supported in the stream. So by using parallel stream, which is supported. So we have a, we have set in a have collection. I want to add a collection to the stream. We use a stream method, right? So this is a sequential stream. And suppose I want to add my collection to the parallel streams and then use one more method called parallel stream method. So we have a method called parallel stream. So this particular method will create a sub streams and all collection objects will be added to the multiple sub streams then process will happen parallelly and finally we'll get the consolidated result. So this is a basic understanding of what is parallel stream. So by default, the stream uh, will like, process the object sequentially. And if you want to process the objects parallelly, we can go with the parallel streams. The advantage of parallel stream is improve the performance of your code. Okay, now I'll show you one example how we can work with the parallel streams in Java streams. Let me uh, clear it. Okay, let's go to our Eclipse and now I'm going to create a new example. Let's go to our project Java 8 streams under SRC. I'm creating a new package. Now I'm giving some package name called parallel streams. Okay, and say finish. Now inside this, I'm going to create a new class. I'll name it as parallel streams, parallel streams demo. Take this main method and then say finish. Now I created one parallel streams uh, demo class. Now I'm going to show you how we can create parallel streams and how to process the data. So before that, let me just create a uh, few number of objects of a student class. Let me just create one student class here. Let me just have class called as a student. And now in this class, I'll define uh, two variables. I'll define the first variable is a string the name of the student and uh, int uh, score of the student score. So I'm just defined the two different variables. One is a name and the other one is a score. Now to fill the data in the variables, I'm writing one constructor student and which will take two arguments. One is a name argument, string type. The other one is an int score object, a score argument. And once you get the data into the constructor, I'll assign the data into the variable by using, I'll say this dot name equal to name, this dot score equal to score. All right, so by using this keyword, I can, I can differentiate our local variables into class variables. So this is our string type. All right, now I created one class which contains a two variables and I have created one method. And also I'll create two more uh, methods along with the constructor which will display the data of the student name and score. So for that, I'm just creating one method, uh, public method, I can say public uh, get name. And when I call this method, which will return the name of the student. So I'm just returning the name. I'll say return statement is this dot name. This is a get name method I created. So public get name. So this return is, uh, it is returning some value. So we have to specify the return type as a string. Similarly, I'll create one more method, uh, which is get to score and which will return the score of the student. I'll say score. 
okay which will return the score of the student which is integer return type is integer now this is my class definition which have two variables and i created one constructor which will assign the data into the variables and then i created two more methods on get my name method will return the name of the student score get score method will return the score of the student now my requirement is in the main class what is my requirement is i'll create a one collection which contains a student class objects or multiple objects i will have and after that i want to uh, i want to process the data so from that collection so what is the processing i'm going to do is from the student objects let me just put it here so for example uh, i have a collection so i have a collection which contains a multiple student objects like this so every student is object is having name and score so from the student object right i want to first of all i want to uh, filter the students whose score is whose score is greater than 80 okay that greater than or equal to 80 so this my filter condition i am applying on top of streams so once you filter the data the score of the student greater than or equal to 18 once you filter the data and let me just get suppose let's say 5 and 6 objects i will get after filtering the data and again i'll apply some method called limit suppose i have uh, let's say uh, i i got uh, 10 students among 10 students i want to just get only 3 students so i can just limit i can apply the limit on top of filter and once you apply the limit again it will return one more string which contains a uh, three objects let's say limit 3 means the objects will be written finally so from those three objects i will print the i'll process the name i process this uh, string to get the name and the score of the student so this is whole my requirement first i need to have one collection which contains a student objects then i'll add the collection to the stream and from that stream i am fetching the data i am filtering the data based on the score again i'll get one more stream then again i am limiting the data and then i am printing the data so these are the sequence of operations i'm going to do that so first we will see how we can achieve this by using a normal stream and after that i'll show you how we can work with this with parallel streams okay now i have created one class called student which contains a uh, two variables and one constructor two more methods now come to the main method and here i'm going to create uh, one collection list collection which contains a uh, student objects so let me just create a list of a student collection now my collection name is i'll say student list okay and say new or oh, i'm just say array list so you can directly uh, do like this so you can add multiple objects to the student or else you can use arrays concept arrays dot uh, as a list you can use arrays dot uh, as list first of all import the list from java dot util so arrays dot as a list method you can use okay so as a list now import this arrays right so now in this uh, collection i'm just going to add a few number of elements few number of objects okay so arrays dot as a list i think yeah let me check this method arrays dot and i think i not properly imported yeah arrays is imported so when i say new uh, i should not use a new keyword bias because arrays is a a class arrays dot as a list method i have to use so this is a way we can add uh, directly data into the collection so by using arrays dot as list or else you can just create an object of student uh, list and uh, then you can use add method to add all the objects to this collection and if you want to add all objects to the collection directly uh, without using add method you can use like like this arrays dot as list and here i am going to add a uh, student objects directly i am going to add so let me put this so inside this i am just adding uh, multiple objects of the students so let me just have uh, one student uh, can just say this is one student i have so directly i am creating the object without using reference variable and similarly this is one student and then i'll create one more student object let's say bob and uh, i'll say score is 90 and here we have to use comma right because with these are multiple objects i am going to add to the collection now similarly let me add a few objects like this and later i'll change it comma and now this is bob 90 and then i'll say john 
uh, give some data, let's say 65. And uh, then I'll say Kennedy, I'm just adding some data. I'll say 55. And after that, I can say Eric. And here I can make it as uh, 85. Okay, and then I can just say Smith. Okay, Smith, I can just make a 88. And finally, I can make it as a Scott. And uh, I'll say 50. Okay, now I have uh, some data which is added. Now, this is a collection which contains a student's objects, which is a collection which contains a student's object. Now, my requirement is from these objects, I want to filter uh, the student's grade is greater than 80. So how many students we have, their grade is a greater than 80. So this is a one, two, three, and four. There are four objects we have and their grade, uh, their, uh, grade uh, score is greater than 80, all right? So to process this data by using filter, we need to add them into the stream. So now I'm just going to show you a sequential stream. That is a normal stream. So let me just take the collection and how to add this to the stream. So just we need to use stream method. Now we have added that object to the stream. So once we add it to the stream, then I'm applying the filter. And filter is always take the predicate. So predicate means it take the argument and internally, which will verify some condition and returns either true or false. Now in the filter, I'm passing the student object as in Lambda expression, then it will get the score of the student and it will verify whether it's equal to greater than 80 or not. If greater than 80, then it will filter that particular object. And on top of this, I'm also going to uh, apply one more method to process it called limit. And uh, so with this condition, basically it will return four objects because there are four objects uh, whose score is greater than 80. Let's say here it is 82 and here it is 90, 85, 88. So totally four objects I have, but I want to get only three objects. I can just say limit of three. And after that, I want to print that uh, data from those objects, from those three objects. So then I can use one method called for each process, right? So this will take consumer as, an, uh, as a parameter means we need to pass one argument or parameter to the Lambda expression and internally it will perform some action, but it doesn't return anything for us. So I'm just passing the object into this, some parameter and Lambda expression. And I say sys out here from this object, I just want to call these two methods. Okay, now if I just look at to the class, there are two additional methods I created, get name and get score. So I've just called these methods which will return name and the score. So in the println, I'll say stu dot get name and also uh, followed by give some space and concatenation and stu dot get score. I'm calling two methods. That's all. Okay, so now we have done with this and then semicolon. So this is how we need to write the statement. Let me just put in the multiple lines so that we can understand the what are the sequential operations we have done. So this is a for he. So this is a whole uh, stream expression I have written using Lambda expression. So I have added this collection to the stream. Uh, this is normal stream, uh, sequential stream, and then I apply the filter on the stream. And this particular filter, uh, filter the data objects in from the collection and then from the stream, and then return the multiple objects whose score is greater than or equal to 80. And after returning this, uh, I'm limiting them into three. So finally, I'll get the three objects. From those three objects, I'm reading each and every object I'm passing into for each method. And that will give you get name and get sort methods I'm calling. So that will print the system dot print, print ln method inside the for each will print the data of student object. And how I'm getting the data of the student object by calling the get name and get sort, which is created inside the class. So this is how we can just implement the same requirement by using normal stream, which is a sequential stream. Now let me just run as a Java application. You will get some records here. So we have, uh, see this, there are uh, uh, there are three records because we have applied limit as a three. So totally four records are there, four objects are there whose score is greater than or equal to 80, but it is returning only uh, three because we have limited the records here. Okay, this we can achieve by using a normal stream. Now, instead of using normal stream, I'm just going to use parallel stream, okay? 
So now I'm going to show you this is uh, using using stream. Okay, this is a sequential operation we can perform. This is a sequential process. All right, so this will perform the sequential process. Now, what I will do is I'll show you how we can uh, process the data using parallel stream. Okay using parallel stream. So how we can process the data by using parallel stream. So instead of using stream method directly we use uh, one more method called parallel stream. So that is a method we have to use. Now let me just copy the same stuff and put it here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply instead of stream I say parallel stream. So we can just look at that method as soon as you get the collection dot you can find with this method called parallel stream okay so parallel stream method and then you can do the rest of the process as usual so here we use only stream but instead of that we use parallel stream here so what exactly difference here and here is here it will create just a single stream and operations will be performed sequentially but here which will create a parallel streams so if i just look at in this particular process the collection will be added to the single stream and all the objects will be there, like say object one, object two, object three, and process will happen one after another object, even filter, then limit, these operations will happen one object after another object. So this is a sequential operation, one after another. So in this particular case, we have added collection to the parallel stream. So which will create a parallel streams like this. And few objects will be added here, few more objects will be added here randomly and the same filter operation and then limit operations will be applied parallelly. And finally, we'll get the one single result. So instead of processing sequentially, if I do parallel processing uh, in multiple pipelines, the execution will be very faster. The performance of the code will be increased. So this is a basically parallel stream means. So let me just, uh, now I have done the parallel stream. So let me execute this code and which will also give the same result but internally it will create a parallel streams to make our faster. So I'll say Java application. So now we can just look at the results. We got the same results. All three records we got, all uh, student scores are greater than or equal to 80 and limited with the three and I got the data. So this is how we can create a parallel stream instead of a normal stream. There is one more way also we have, for example, I already created a normal stream then I can apply the parallel method to make the normal stream into parallel stream. So that means we can also convert, we can also convert normal stream to parallel stream. That means sequential stream to uh, parallel stream. So normal stream method representing sequential process and parallel stream is representing parallel process. So here, suppose I already have a normal stream, right? I can convert that into parallel stream. Okay, I can convert that into parallel stream. So to convert normal sequence stream into parallel stream, we use one method called parallel method, parallel method. And this method can be accessed through stream class itself. Okay, now let me just tell you how we can do that. Now I'm copying the first code so because here we just use normal stream, sequential stream, right? Now here, if I just look at this, so I have added the collection to my stream. Now it is a sequential stream. Now I want to convert this stream into parallel stream. Okay, sequential stream into a parallel stream. So immediately you can write one method called parallel like this and then followed by the rest of the operations. So here this particular statement, first the collection will be added to the stream and that stream is again converted into parallel streams by calling parallel method from the stream class. So then the filter operation and limit operations as usual, rest of the operations will be processed as usual. So this is another way. So the first way is we just added the collection to the stream. This is a sequential stream and then process is started. And the second example here, directly I created the parallel streams and collection objects will be added to the parallel streams and process will be done. In this approach, first I've added collection to the normal stream, that is your sequential stream then I make them as a parallel. I convert the normal stream into parallel stream. Then I have done the process. Now let us execute this, which will also give the same result. Yes. So this is a result which is given by the first stream. 
second stream and the third stream okay so this is how we can work with the parallel streams so this is a one of the important concept which we have in the streams so we can process the uh, collection data uh, in parallel streams so there are two approaches we have we can directly apply parallel stream on the collection or we can add the collection into the uh, sequential scheme then i can convert into parallel stream okay so that's all for this video guys uh, thanks for watching